What's up everyone, Edukime Player here and quarantine continues as we're still practicing social distancing in one way or another. Hopefully you're all keeping yourselves and others safe by continuing to do your part in this battle. All over the world, doctors, nurses and other healthcare professionals have been fighting in the front lines, putting their lives in danger on a daily basis for our benefit. So as a homage to those real life heroes, starting today we'll be looking at some of our favorite doctors and nurses from fighting games. If you're new around here, just so you know, I like to go deep with every character, covering not only their backstory, but if at all possible analyzing their gameplay and tier placement in the competitive scene. That means that I might not have time to cover everyone, so if I miss someone that you think should have been here, let me know in the comment section below. Also, since there's quite a lot to go through, I decided to split this video in two parts. Today we'll talk about the doctors and the next video will be all about our favorite fighting game nurses. Seems fair? Oh, and just to make it abundantly clear, we'll be looking at healthcare professionals only, past and present. That means no scientists or any other kinds of doctors, and also no characters who only happen to have a related costume or something. I'm looking at you, entire cast of Dead or Alive. So, all set? Let's get this ball rolling then, cause we got a lot of names to cover in this video. First up is everybody's favorite wacky doctor, Faust from Guilty Gear. But before we go any further with this analysis, we need to talk about the elephant in the room here, which is a character from the first game in the series called Dr. Baldhead. Though it's never stated in any game dialogue or official material that they're the same person, Dr. Baldhead simply shares way too many similarities with Faust, like physical build, fighting style and even his backstory. Add to that a few very obvious hints and it's all but certain that both characters are one and the same. Therefore, I'll be looking into Dr. Baldhead too, thus adding a few more details in what is most likely Faust's backstory. With that said, let's rewind time back to 1998 when Guilty Gear was released for PlayStation. One of the characters was a lanky bald guy wearing round shaped glasses and sticking his tongue out in a decisively creepy manner. That was Dr. Baldhead, a once renowned physician turned serial killer after losing his grip on reality due to the mysterious death of one of his patients. Though he would continue to behave much like a doctor, thinking of his victims as patients to be treated, Baldhead's insanity drove him to simultaneously revel in their bloodshed, even if this would make him horrified by the results of his own actions. Born in China, the man who would be known as Dr. Baldhead became a surgeon during the Crusades, which in the Guilty Gear universe refers to the Hundred Year War between humans and Gears. His incredible surgical skills made him famous and respected throughout the world for over a hundred years. One day, a young girl came under his care and, in order to save her life, the good doctor proposed an unauthorized surgery but was repeatedly denied. He eventually went ahead anyway, unaware that this procedure held the key to resurrection, which the Conclave, a sort of secret organization that runs the world, wanted to remain unrevealed fearing that he would compromise their plans. The leader of the Assassin's Guild, Zato One, was then hired by the Post-War Administration Bureau, a proxy of the Conclave, to take care of the problem and the girl ended up dying under mysterious circumstances during the surgery. Unaware of any conspiracies, the doctor was led to believe that he had committed a mistake and her death was a consequence of his own malpractice. This realization drove him mad and Dr. Baldhead soon embarked on a violent serial killing rampage, murdering an untold number of people before being captured. He remained locked away in a jail cell until a stranger appeared to set him free, telling him that numerous patients were waiting for his surgical genius and expertise in the upcoming Holy Order tournament, which, long story short, was a competition to select members to form a group who would defend the world against an upcoming terrible threat. After the dramatic end of the tournament with the death of Justice, a powerful and dangerous gear, aka artificial magical creature, Dr. Baldhead saw himself surrounded by a crowd letting out cries of relief and jubilation. Those voices ended up awakening forgotten memories in his mind and he saw the young girl at the operation table saying that her death wasn't his fault and everyone was still waiting for him. Having regained his humanity, Baldhead decided to take his own life to atone for his sins. But after learning that someone else might have been responsible for what happened to the young girl, he decided to seek the truth behind his past misfortunes and save as many lives as he could under a new name, Faust. As Faust, Dr. Bald had made a few changes to his wardrobe, the most memorable one being the fact that he now wears a paper bag as a mask, with only one eye hole. 
He also became an extreme goofball, adding a wide variety of crazy techniques to his arsenal. Though his behavior remains erratic at best, Faust's compassion and generosity have returned undimmed, and he's quite serious about being a doctor and helping those in need to atone for his sins. He even extends this kindness beyond humans, caring equally for gears as well, despite the fact that most of the time they're seen as little more than killing machines. Still, even though he regained part of his sanity, Faust is just as likely to talk complete nonsense as he is to say something profound that can help others find their path in life. In Guilty Gear Exert, which takes place seven years after the Holy Order tournament, Faust learns from Slayer that the Conclave was responsible for the incident that caused him to lose his sanity and that he can get more answers from the assassin hired to do the deed, Zato-1, who had been recently resurrected by the Conclave. They eventually meet and, after Zato confirms his involvement, Faust defeats him in combat. He doesn't take his life though, as he's more interested in discovering the truth than seeking revenge. Later on, while fighting to prevent another trap, he gets the opportunity to finally confront Kronos, the leader of the Conclave himself. Once again though, Faust decides to spare his enemy's life, seeming more interested and shocked to discover that there is actually someone above the Conclave's authority. As silly as Faust may seem, Venom implies that the Doctor's bloodthirsty side still looms over him, but he keeps it under tight control. Indeed, even when confronting the two people responsible for the mishap that ruined his life, Faust's first and foremost priority is saving lives, even as he feels the powerful urge to slaughter them. Faust has been confirmed as one of the playable characters in the upcoming Guilty Gear Strive, complete with a new, creepier look, but for now there's no information about his involvement in the plot. As far as gameplay goes, we'll be using Guilty Gear Exert Rev 2 as the basis for the analysis, as this is Faust's most recent game, if you don't consider the still unreleased Guilty Gear Strive. Despite his bizarre appearance and absolutely hilarious attacks, Faust is a surprisingly fundamental spacing character that uses abusive normals and a variety of annoying items to keep his opponents at bay. He's equipped with a command grab and an instant overhead, which combined with various items make for a deadly Yokizemi game, aka pressure after knocking down your opponent. Faust has both straightforward combos and game plan, which makes him a strong choice for beginners to pick up, while the focus on fundamentals means he's also difficult to master. His range is fantastic, his anti-air and air-to-air -air attacks are top-notch, and his weird hitboxes, combined with the ability to low profile by crawling, help his defense game as well. On the other hand, Faust's defense is quite low and his hitbox and hit stun is large, meaning he can die rather quickly. His items, while potentially powerful, are random, which leads to inconsistent rewards. Faust is also definitely in the slow side when it comes to the activation and recovery of some of his normals, especially those with longer range. Still, when you measure all the pros and cons together, Faust is usually seen in the higher part of most tier lists, sometimes even as high as a top 5 character. So that's Faust in a nutshell for you, an insane doctor who protects people to atone for his past sins. Our second entry in this list, however, is someone with a much more serious personality. Doctor Strange, the master of the mystic arts. That's right, it's Marvel, baby! Making his fighting game debut in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Doctor Stephen Strange was a brilliant but excessively arrogant surgeon before a car accident left him unable to work due to heavy damage to his hands. Desperate for a treatment, having tried everything else, Strange sought the help of a legendary healer named the Ancient One, rumored to be living in Tibet. After witnessing one of the Ancient One's students attempt to assassinate the sorcerer, Doctor Strange asked to be taught the secrets of magic as well. In time, he mastered the mystic arts and eventually succeeded the Ancient One as the Sorcerer Supreme, thus abandoning his whole life for the greater good. Now one of the most powerful magic users in the Marvel Universe, Doctor Strange saved the world from unspeakable mystic threats from entities such as Dormammu and Shumagora, both of whom, by the way, were also playable characters in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. With his comic book creation dating back to 1963, there's obviously much more to his story than I can conceivably fit in one video, but that should be enough to give you a general idea of who he is. Though, to be honest, the task was likely unnecessary in the first place given his appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the Marvel vs. Capcom series, Doctor Strange is a powerful zoner with tons of tricks up his sleeve. His spells can hit enemies anywhere on the screen or linger on the field, setting up traps for his tricky setups. 
You can also bounce opponents off walls and open them up for big, flashy combos, either by Strange himself or his partner. He's usually considered to be between mid to high tier in the Marvel vs Capcom series, which is no easy task considering that these games are filled with dozens of characters armed with huge, ridiculous combos that can melt life bars. Doctor Strange has never been quite among the very best characters in the roster, but he's a solid choice to complement your team and, with the right help, he can be a force to be reckoned with. Well then, Frost and Doctor Strange might have been obvious choices for this list, but I still have some tricks up my sleeve. Coming up next is a character who has only been playable in a handful of SNK fighting games. It's Li Pai Long from Art of Fighting. Li is a Taiwanese medical professor and master of Chinese medicine and Chinese Kempo, the latter of which is dubbed as a gentle yet destructive art. He represents the classic Senning stereotype of the cocky old master and fights with two Wolverine-like metal claws, which don't look like they're retractable, but yet only appear during certain moves. His adopted father and mentor, Lee Gaksuo, is a good acquaintance and sporting partner of Takuma Sakazaki, being responsible for the X-shaped scar on his chest. Gaksuo passed on his pharmaceutical knowledge and martial arts to Pai Long before instructing him to finish his studies in South Town. Once he arrived there, Lee became fascinated with the local style of Kempo and neglected his roots to be a street fighter. He started working as the director of the South Town prison while also keeping a small herbal shop on the side. During Ryo Sakazaki and Robert Garcia's adventure to save Yuri, they fought and beat Lee in Chinatown. In the sequel, Lee is seen pursuing his wishes to be a pharmacist, with his ending in that game showing how he became famous for finding the cure to hemorrhoids. In 2005's Neo Geo Battle Coliseum, Li Pai Long's last playable appearance, his backstory once again involves his pharmaceutical background. In that game, the evil corporation Warex, in its bid for global domination, takes an interest in Li's miraculous medicine and threatens to hurt his family unless he gives them the formula. His ending has him successfully defeating the syndicate and his family business enjoying a boom of customers desiring the secret of his longevity. Li is a rushdown character, one of the fastest in the game and is capable of applying tremendous pressure with a variety of tools, including a command grab that is a great setup for combos. His strings and pokes are pretty safe, and he's got a variety of all-jump follow-ups, similar to Street Fighter's Vega or Balrog, depending on your original preference. On the other hand, Lee lacks good defensive options, and his low damage output requires high execution and creativity to get things going in the long run. Still, the tools that he has are more than enough to make him a fantastic option that comfortably hovers between the A and S tier, depending on who you ask. And with that, we're three characters into this list. I'm still not done though. After all, how can I make a list of fighting game doctors without including some unknown even by players that are not familiar with fighting games? It's time for one of video games' most recognizable faces, Dr. Mario from Super Smash Bros. Dr. Mario works at the Mushroom Kingdom Hospital, where he eliminates viruses and other diseases by using Mega Vitamins, a medicine of his own invention. He made his fighting game debut in Super Smash Bros. Melee as an unlockable fighter. According to series creator Masahiro Sakurai, the concept of a slower, yet stronger Mario was originally considered to be used for Wario, but due to time constraints it was instead given to Dr. Mario. In Ultimate, he once again functions as a stronger, yet slower clone of Mario, though by now he has picked up a few additional differences from his normal self. Dr. Mario is a defensive character, better suited for patient players. Once he finds the perfect opportunity to strike, he can capitalize on his opponent's mistakes with combos that can rack up a ton of damage. He is, however, quite slow and has bad recovery, meaning you can die quickly if you're not careful with your approaches. Most tier lists seem to agree that Dr. Mario is a much worse choice than his regular self. While normal Mario tends to be placed around the middle of the pack, the good doctor is consistently below that line, usually listed as a low mid tier, and I have seen him even being considered a bottom 3 character. Well, those were all the regular characters I have for today, but I still have one more surprise. A fighting game doctor, yes, but from an unreleased title. It's Dr. Faustus from Thrill Kill. For those who are unfamiliar with this rather obscure title, Kill Thrill was a violent 3D arena-based fighting game scheduled to be released on the Sony PlayStation in October 1998. Though it was never officially completed, near-finished builds of the game have made their way into the internet, 
thus allowing us to take a closer look at this game that would have been the first one to receive the adults-only classification. It was being developed by Paradox Development, later renamed Midway Studio Los Angeles, who went on to make X-Men Mutant Academy and my personal favorite Mortal Kombat game, Shaolin Monks. As for Thrill Kill, the game is notable for its high level of controversial content, and certainly not for its playability. It plays loosely similar to Power Stone 2, with up to 4 fighters entering the arena at the same time. The story revolves around 8 characters, which are incarnations of mental illness and vices on Earth. It takes place in Hell, the characters all being sinners who have died and descended into the Abyss. Maruka, the goddess of secrets, in her own boredom, has pitted the damned characters against each other for entertainment. They are fighting to stay alive and for the chance to be reborn onto Earth. Among these is Dr. Faustus, a deranged plastic surgeon from Los Angeles, California, who intentionally disfigured many of his patients. He is armed with a scalpel and has a set of metal jaws attached to his own face that resembles a bear trap, which he also uses to attack with. He died from the infection caused by the grafting of said contraption onto his face and his ending shows him murdering one of his patients. So now let's talk gameplay. As you can probably imagine, Thrill Kill doesn't exactly have a thrilling competitive scene, so finding reliable information wasn't easy at all. Still, I wanted to give you guys more than just my general impression from playing the game for a couple of hours, so after some research, I was able to track down a guy who was quite a big fan of the game. He goes by TG, and he's the owner of the expertly named Twitch channel, Hey, I'm TG, link in the description below. He posts a lot of speedruns over there, but for this video he acted as my main source of technical information about Dr. Faustus and the game itself. TG might not be a competitive player, after all I'm not even sure such a thing as a competitive throw kill player exists, but he should be able to make some fairly accurate guesses about the game. Anyway, before we look a little closer at Dr. Faustus, it's important to know how thrill kill works in terms of combos. According to TG, every character has a few chains that allow links between different special moves. However, there's also high and low counters that can shut down combos, so ideally the attacking character wants to have a variety of paths to choose from so they can bait the opponent into doing a bad breaker. Therefore, the bigger and more versatile your arsenal of combos is, the easier time you have going into a fight. So with that said, how does the Crazy Doctor stacks up against the competition? Well, Dr. Faustus has good maneuverability and his dash speed is pretty quick, so you can back dash out of range when you're in trouble. In fact, in the corner mobility will have to be your main way to get out of jams, since it's hard for him to combo into something that can put some space between you and your opponent. While Dr. Faustus does have the ability to stun and excellent juggles, both of which can lead to massive damage, especially in the corner, most of his chains can be broken with a high counter, so the opponent doesn't need to do a lot of guesswork if you rely too much on it. Overall, his ability to end rounds instantly is pretty good, but he might have a tough time doing that consistently, and unlike some of his fellow cast members, most of his big damage relies on cornering the opponent. I also asked TG to come up with a tier list, and according to his best guess, Dr. Faustus would be around a C tier character, but with some more practice he might be able to squeeze into the B tier. Still, there's just no way for him to compete with the tools of some of the best characters like Imp, Belladonna and Tormentor. And that, my friends, is a wrap for today. As usual, leave your comments and suggestions below, remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet, and if you can, please share this content on social media so we can continue to grow our little community. Also, I'm slowly starting to do some things over at Twitch from time to time, so if you want to follow me there, the link will be in the description as well. Next up will be the Fighting Game Nurses video, so you can look forward to that. For now, this has been Eduke Player, and I'll see you guys later.